Okay, here we are in Blender. This is pretty much the default scene you get when you open Blender. First things first is adding our reference image. So Shift-A, go down to Image, select Reference, navigate to your reference image, and just import it. Okay. And now we're going to delete the default cube, shift A, add in a UV sphere, shade smooth, just for aesthetic reasons and work. Now we're going to try to create this lip. So change to edge select and then control alt shift, select an edge loop that goes all the way around. Uh, bevel it and then we're just going to select the faces within the bevel and extrude it inward ES just like that and actually I want to bevel this a little bit larger so I'm going to just control Z and do the same thing the same thing here E S extrude inward and then scale down. All right, cool. Let's take this edge down a little bit, turn on toggle on proportional editing, and then just move that down. Okay. Turn off proportional editing and then move that down, move this edge loop down. Okay, great. So now we want this bottom section to be a bit flatter. Control Z to go into X-ray mode so that we can select the faces all the way around. Toggle back to face select, select all these faces and then hit X to dissolve the edges. Okay, so now we have this nice flat bottom. Select the face, inset with a simple I hotkey, G, and then we're gonna bring this down a bit and do that once more. Okay. So now we have this fairly straightforward teapot shape. Next, let's move on to the spout. So to do the spout, let's set ourselves up, select the reference image RZ90, hit three. So we're looking at, looking at the teapot from the side angle. Okay, so we're going to select these four faces here and then subdivide these faces. So we have enough faces to create a smooth circle. Go to loop tools, select circle, and now we've done a circle loop cut. Next up, we need to extrude these faces out along the normal and make sure the spout is generally the correct length. That looks good actually. And now let's scale this top it in and move it up. Okay, looks pretty good. Now let's do all this. Let's add the, the lid, the, the tip of the spout, and then this metal piece. So to do that, let's create a loop cut, move it toward the edge, and then create this top bit here. I'll move this closer. Okay. Now let's go hit seven so we have a top view. And I'm going to select three, maybe four faces. 
between the loop cut and this edge loop, okay. between these two edge loops. Change to face select, and then I'm gonna select these four. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And I'm going to extrude those four faces upward. Create a loop cut just for good measure. Push that down so we have a clean edge. And then we're going to create this bit that's protruding out. So another loop cut will help us out. Move that up and then extrude toward the body of the teapot. So select these four faces, go back to front view, extrude out. Cool. Now we, now we need to add this metal section, create another loop cut, move it toward the edge, the far section of the spout, hit GG to move it along normals. That's where we want it. So I'm gonna click and then bevel that so we have some new faces to work with. I'm actually going to readjust this loop cut a bit and move our reference closer. Okay, control B. And pretty much we're going to do the same thing. Select the top four faces, maybe five faces here. One, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four, five, six. And actually, we just need to select the two faces on the outside. Scratch that. Let's create another loop cut. Cool. And then go back to top view, select six faces here, go back to face select, hotkey three for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then extrude upwards. And it's always good to include a loop cut, the base, Keep the shading looking clean. Now we're going to select just these last two faces and extrude them toward the section we just built. Okay, cool, cool. That's pretty much it. Not bad. Let's add a bevel modifier so we can get these rounder lines. Um, the, bevel, the bevel modifier in this case is a little too precise. So we're going to go with the subdivision surface modifier. And make sure that we apply all transforms. Control A, Control A, Control A, there we go. Apply all transforms. For some reason that moved the reference image. Okay, so in this case, let's select these faces here. 
that are creating shading problems for us. I'm gonna turn off X-ray mode so I can select all these faces without any trouble. And we're going to separate those faces from the body so we can bevel the body of the teapot without worrying about all this really tiny geometry falling into each other. So we don't want this stuff to be beveled very much at all. So for these kind of um, detailed and time consuming selection bits, you can hit C and then this is called circle select and select faces this way. If you hit shift, you it's deselect without shift, it's just select. So let's make sure we have all these faces selected. Some funky angles here. Oh, there's another one. Uh, I see some faces underneath this little structure. Okay, faces on the other side. That looks like all the faces. Oh. Forgot a whole side. There we go. All right. So to separate this section of mesh, select the section you'd like to separate and then hit P and select selection. And now, as you can see here, there's another object in the scene collection. Let's title that about thingy. Okay, and then let's try to apply this subdivision modifier again to the base. Okay, yeah, that looks a lot better. Let's do two subdivisions. Looks really good. Okay, and just for fun, let's add that top sphere. Not that one. Maybe sphere. Okay, scale it down. And then we want it to live at the very center of the top of our teapot. To be precise, let's select the faces at the top of the teapot. Hit shift S. Select cursor to selected. So now we have that cursor at the very center of the very top of the teapot, toggle back into object mode, select the object we want to move, hit not shift A, but shift S, and then select selection to cursor. And now that separate object is exactly where we want it to be. So let's scale it down, make it match. This is the fun part. And shade smooth. So look at that. We already have a teapot. At this point, let's add a material. And for this tutorial, we're just going to work with the materials that are built into Blender. A lot of, not that many people know about the built-in material library, but it's right here in the material tab. Navigate down to material library, FX, and then you'll need to select sample materials. And then there's this great material called ceramic polish. So select that and then apply to selected. And look at that. We have this beautiful ceramic polish already applied. Earlier before recording, I changed the color. So I'll show you how I did that. Navigate to the shading tab and then this is basically where you can build materials. Um, this is the node editor here, and these nodes make up the material that we see 
currently on the teapot. So in order to change the color, navigate here to the color ramp, select these little sliders. And then um, if you cl click on this, this mm, patch at the bottom of the node, you know, you can, you, there's a color wheel and look, you can just select the color. We've all seen a color wheel before. So yeah, looks pretty great for a sample material. I personally think the sample materials are a little bit overlooked in Blender. So there we go. Let's also apply that same material to this knob on top. And then we're gonna want to apply separate materials, right, to this section here and this section here. Okay, which I'll quickly do um, off camera so we can move on to the next thing, which is modeling this beautiful tulip handle.